Well, good afternoon. Thank you for joining me today. Each fall, I remind Pennsylvanians to get a flu shot to avoid getting influenza. We talk about how the flu vaccine is just a great way to not only protect yourself, but also protect those you love who have medical conditions that could make them very susceptible to the flu. They could get a very serious illness from the flu. And we talk about how easy it is to get a flu shot at almost any grocery store, pharmacy, or your doctor's office or clinic. But this year, this year, it is more important than ever to get a flu shot. Last flu season, a record-setting number of Pennsylvanians were diagnosed with influenza, 130,000. Nearly 130,000 Pennsylvanians were diagnosed with the flu. And this is just the number of people who sought medical assistance, were then tested for the flu, and had laboratory-confirmed results. We know that there were many more people who had influenza, but they didn't really seek medical attention. They recovered. Tragically, 102 Pennsylvanians, including one child, died as a result of the flu last year. This year, things will be even more dangerous with the global pandemic due to COVID-19 spreading through our communities. Typical flu symptoms such as fever, cough, sore throat, nasal congestion, headaches, fatigue, tiredness, vomiting, diarrhea, are really the very same symptoms that can occur with COVID-19. So while we wait for a safe and effective COVID-19 vaccine to go through its clinical trials, you can get a safe and effective flu shot right now. This year, we have requested and expect to receive more than 860,000 doses of the flu vaccine to make available to people in Pennsylvania. Anyone older than six months of age should get a flu vaccine unless they have a medical condition that prevents them from getting one. You can opt for the flu shot or there is a nasal spray and both are options to protect you from the flu. If you are uninsured, or underinsured, call us at 1-877-PA-HEALTH to set up a time to visit a state health center to get a flu vaccine completely free of charge. If you have insurance, it's a benefit that is covered by almost all carriers, including uh, Medicare and Medicaid and CHIP, and if you contact them to see if there's any copay. But remember, your grocery store, pharmacy, and doctor's offices, they actually have the flu vaccine right now. All of our efforts are designed to support our communities to lessen the impact of infectious diseases like COVID-19 and influenza. Pennsylvanians are united in this fight to stop the spread of COVID-19. They, they are united in wearing masks when out in public. They are united in practicing social distancing. And they are united in stopping the spread by washing their hands frequently or using hand sanitizer. Pennsylvanians are united because we want to save lives. We want to stay at work and we want our kids to stay in school. Pennsylvanians are united because we know that we have a collective responsibility to stop the spread of COVID-19. So please adapt your activities to prevent against the spread of COVID-19 and the flu. And as always, stay calm, stay alert, and stay safe. Thank you. And I'm very pleased to answer your questions. Yeah? Um, so today, Governor Wolf announced um, starting September 21st, there'll be an increase to 50% capacity for restaurants to serve inside. Um, what is the basis behind that? Well, so, you know, we, we did the mitigation efforts because of the increases that we were seeing um, in, uh, in the summer. 
And this was as a result of people going to restaurants and bars and nightclubs. We had this evidence from our own qualitative and quantitative data. We also had evidence from other states. And we also were following specific recommendations from the White House Task Force. Dr. Burks was here last week. She had said that we had done a quote unquote remarkable job. And we have been able to bend that curve. So now we're at the point where we feel that we can raise that occupancy limit, but do it in a very safe way, and that involves the um, uh, using uh, the uh, capacity where they're going to be doing their um, their reports, their capacity for the for in terms of following the guidance. Uh, just to follow up: is is it going to continue to be fifty percent heading into fall when they can't serve outside anymore? Um, we'll see. I mean, right now we're taking this step, so it's the self-certification um, uh, uh, protocols that they're gonna, and, and uh, forms that they have to fill out, and so uh, that will go into effect on the 21st. And so uh, we're making that specific step now because of the progress that we have made, and we do realize, of course, the significant impact upon uh, the restaurant uh, industry and those jobs and the people th uh, that they serve, and so uh, the administration is to making that effort now. Yes. So the cases have been going down since the July 15th order came or went into effect, I should say. So are you are, are you apprehensive that this is going to now we could see an increase in cases that we're going to go back to 50 percent, obviously not to what we were in the green phase uh, with restaurants, because there are still more restrictions under this than there were in the green phase, I believe, in terms of bar service and stuff like that. And at ten, uh, I think it's 10 p.m. Cut off for right. So with more people out, are you just concerned that that's, we could see the rising cases? Well, we want to take one step at a time, right? So, I mean, uh, we, we've kind of, as you know, kind of gone beyond the, the red, green, yellow type uh, and the, that schema. And so uh, we had put in uh, specific targeted mitigation, knowing what we knew about our qualitative and quantitative data, but also what we were seeing in other states and also specific recommendations from the federal government. Um, we have made progress. Um, Dr. Burks was here and, cert and uh, quoted that last week. And so now we're going to, uh, to, to work to increase the capacity, help the restaurants, um, help those workers. But we still want to have um, uh, some mitigation, and that's why we're adding the 10 PM last call. If I could just, I'm sorry, sure. if I could just follow up to that real quick. Um, you know, New Jersey, for example, you don't have to order food to sit at a uh, to sit at a table or to sit at, at, at a bar. As obviously, this year you're not allowed to do that under, under this new um, mm -hmm. uh, or not order, but whatever you want to call it. I guess. Sure. Um, why can't people? Why do people have to order food? What is the what's the reasoning, the logic behind that? Because we don't want people to congregate while they're drinking. We don't want people to be at bars and to be congregating and not following social distancing. So by being at tables, ordering food, um, then uh, the, the tables are set so that they're six feet apart. And so we want to avoid people from congregating together to stop the spread of COVID-19. Yeah. Well, the Restaurant Lodging Association said today that this is a step in the right direction. They're happy about that, but they're concerned, again, about the 10 o'clock. I don't think you can legally in a restaurant serve a, a, a cocktail after 10 p.m. Is that correct? And what they ask is magical about 10 o'clock. Um, I, I think we want it. Distanced and you're following the other uh, precautions. Right. I, I think that we wanted to continue that mitigation effort and do it particularly in terms of what we're seeing with college students, with older college students. I mean, we have seen a significant increase in terms of the numbers uh, in 19 to 24 year olds. That Those numbers throughout the state have been going up significantly. Uh, we have seen outbreaks at many colleges in Pennsylvania. And at this now, right now, of course, following their, their president's um, uh, recommendations, you know, they're recommending not to congregate in parties. We didn't want them to congregate in restaurants slash bars and be all together. And so we put in the mitigation effort uh, to prevent them from being uh, from serving liquor after 10 o'clock. Are bars that don't serve food even legal at this point? Uh, bars that don't serve food are still closed. That is correct. But as you know, many um, uh, bar slash restaurants are out there. In fact, most are bar slash restaurants serving food, and we don't want people starting to, co to, to, to congregate together, especially in college areas. 
And why wait until September 21st? Because we want to give them time to fill out um, the self-certification. So that self-certification won't be available um, uh, for several weeks. We want them to look at that and start to fill it out. And we want to give everyone time to make the necessary preparations for this change. I mean, so this is going to be different in terms of, of where seating will occur uh, and, and things like that. We want everyone to be prepared. We want to make sure that our numbers are still good. And so um, we're waiting two weeks to implement. Uh, yeah? Why, why go for the self-certification? And also, I saw some of the uh, requirements. Do they have to self-require that they update as you update those rules? Update the schools? Rules. Like, the rules. Yeah. Well, so we want to make sure that restaurants can, can expand their indoor capacity. We want to make sure that, that they self-certify, and that's going to be on an online database for people to be able to see, so that when you go out to the restaurant, you know that your restaurant has filled out this self-certification pledge um, and form and can feel comfortable going to that restaurant. I mean, th there was a document that showed that, uh, you know, that many people don't feel comfortable uh, going to restaurants. They're concerned that that they, they might they, that they might be exposed, that the restaurant might be following the rules. And so this is a way for the for the restaurants to demonstrate not only to us, but actually to their customers that they know what the rules are, they're following the rules, and they have certified that they're going to follow the rules. Yeah. One other thing that the uh, sure. restaurant lodging association is concerned about is uh, indoor banquets of any sort. So if I'm a restaurant that seats 200, 50 percent capacity is 100. But there's the other rule about you can't have a single event of more than 25 right. people indoor. So which one? This is restaurants. It does not involve um, like uh, special events. This is restaurants. Yes. So I guess what would be the reasoning why? Why does this not include that? What was the when you were looking at to just look to just. Um, increase restaurants, why not the, the Well, we want to do one thing at a time, and also um, if, if a gathering could seat, um, you know, a thousand people, we don't want, 50% um, would be 500 people, and the more you put people, especially indoors, right, you, and, and you congregate together, the more likelihood is that you're going to transfer this illness, and so this involves restaurants. And my last question is sure. just, uh, about the data of this, so is it the, the theory, at least that I've heard, is as it gets colder, more people move inside, that the virus spreads more rapidly that way and that there will be spikes. But yet it seems that we're loosening the reins a bit even though we're going into that season in which we might see spikes. Right, but we have to be really careful. I mean, as you, we don't want to, we, to drive the restaurant industry out of business. And so as you're going into colder weather, people are much less likely to eat outdoors, right? So, I mean, they have been able to eat outdoors, and that has been really important for the restaurant industry. As we get colder, that's going to become less and less likely. And so in order to, uh, to, to work to save the restaurant industry and those jobs, we're making accommodations. And we're doing it at a time that our our numbers are low. Um, we're going to have to see how, how, time, how time goes, uh, but uh, now is the time to do that. Okay. Thank you, Secretary. Thank you.